Hey teachers! In this video, I can't wait to share a game-changing organizational tool with you. Now before I share exactly what this tool is and how you can use it to get your life organized, I just want to take a second to ask if you could please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. We produce all of the content here on this channel for free and by taking the time to do those two simple things, it enables us to keep producing free content for this channel. So now let's go ahead and get into it. I am one of those people who loves to organize things. Things. And one of the ways that I stay organized is by keeping a planner where I keep my daily and weekly to-do list and I live by what is in that planner. I also am one of those sticky note people that loves to use sticky notes to record all of my ideas checklist, links, anything you can think of. I probably have it on a sticky note next to my desk. The only problem is with all of these things is even though I use them to help keep my life organized, sometimes it can actually lead to my life becoming unorganized when my desk becomes completely overrun with post-it notes and my workspace just gets really unorganized. Recently, I discovered Google Keep, which is a free Google app that allows you to create and store to-do lists, checklists, and notes all in one place. And since I've started using Google Keep, I've been able to completely declutter my workspace. I've gotten rid of all those sticky notes that were all over the place, and I have moved them all into Google Keep, which means I can then access them from my computer or my phone, pretty much anywhere at any time. So let's go ahead and jump on my laptop. I'm going to show you how to get started in Google Keep by moving all of my sticky notes into there. So getting started in Google Keep is really easy. Either go to a search engine and type in Google Keep. It should be the first thing that comes up. Or you can just type in keep.google.com into your browser and it will bring up this page right here. Now you'll see I don't have any notes saved at the moment. We are going to start on a blank canvas here. So starting your first note is simple. You've got three different options here at the top. You can either start by creating a list and I'm going to show you another way to to create a list after you start a note in just a second. You can do a new note with drawing and it will take you to a page like this where you can draw. Personally, I don't like this unless you have one of those pens that can write on like an iPad or something. I find this to be a little hard. Or you can start a new note with uploading an image from your computer and the image will go at the top of your note and then you can type underneath of it. But I'm just going to start with typing my to-do list and basically I just want to take what I had on that sticky note and I'm going to move it over here so I can clear off some space on my desk. So I'm going to title this weekly to-do. And then I'm going to go ahead and list out each of those things from my sticky note here. Now like I said, I would show you a way that you can start a checklist at any time and you're just going to click on these three dots and then click on show check boxes. And the nice thing about this is, is it allows you to cross things off as you do them if you use the check boxes. So if you're like me and you get a lot of satisfaction off of uh, crossing things off on your to-do list, you're gonna like this feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and type out each thing on a different line. So these are all of the major things that I need to get done this week. And real quick, I want to review what each of these options are along the bottom now that I've typed out my list. The first one is remind me and you can set up a reminder that will appear in your browser. So if you have something that needs to be done by a specific time or on a certain day, you can set up this reminder. Keep in mind though that this reminder is not going to go to your Google Calendar or your phone. It's just going to appear in your browser. Now this collaborator option is something that I use quite often. You can add people to your note so that way they can save the note as well, view the things on it. They can also check items off on the list. So if you and your team are working collaboratively on something, they can be checking things off as they get things done and you can be checking things off as you get it done. I like to create notes, I like to create to-do lists and share them with the members of my team so that we can all be on the same page. 
The next one is your change color. This is another one that I use a lot. I like to color code my notes. Usually I keep things that are just for me one color. I keep things that are for my team, the whole team, another color, and then I keep personal things like lists related to my adoption or other things like that, another color. So I like to color code, definitely helps me stay organized. This is if you would like to add an image to your note, you can do that. What archiving something does is it is going to take it off of your main screen. So you can see right now, I'm in the notes. This is my main screen. It appears straight away when I come to Google Keep. But let's say I don't really need this note anymore, but I'd like to save it to refer back to in the future. I can click archive. It's taken it away from the main screen. But if I click archive over here, you will see that it's still saved. So I find this to be really helpful for meeting agendas and notes. Maybe I want to look back and see what we talked about in a previous meeting. I can do that if I need to see notes from a project that I was working on a couple weeks or a couple months ago. I can do that, but it's not filling up that home page. I just keep the things that I need to see right now there and I can restore it back to my notes at any time by clicking unarchive. And you'll see if I go back to my notes, it's here. Now the three dots, we talked about these a little bit. You can delete a note. You can add labels to notes. Like I said, I like to color code things. That helps me, but you can also add labels. So you can add your weekly to-do list, your meeting notes, your student data notes. You can add different labels and then all of your notes will be filed under those labels. Add drawing is if you want to draw on your note like I showed you previously. Like I said, unless you have a tablet with a pen, I find this to be really tricky. You can also make a copy of a note. So let's say I just wanna copy my meeting agenda from the previous week and I'm just gonna make a few tweaks to it. I can do that. The hide check boxes. So if I put check boxes there and now I want them to go away, I can take them away and I can add them back at any time. And you can also copy this into a Google Doc. So let's say you are getting ready for your upcoming team meeting and you're kind of just taking notes about things that you want to talk about, you can then copy those into a Google Doc, clean it up a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer, and then send the Google Doc out to your team. So those are all very helpful. Now I also want to show you, remember I told you it's very satisfying for me when I can cross things off of my to-do list. So you'll see that once I get this digital math skill plan done for the school district I'm working with, I can click check and it will cross that off. If I get the math resources for my Virginia Teacher Club done, I can cross that off and I can uncheck them at any time as well and it will add them back into my to-do list. Now, just a few quick things to note. Over here, you pretty much have a lot of the same options that you get here. Here you can look and see what reminders you've set up. If you want to create and edit labels here to set up those categories, you can do that. And then I've already showed you where we can archive our notes as well. Uh, also, after you delete, it will save it in the trash for a short period of time before it is permanently deleted. So that is pretty much everything that you can do here inside of Google Keep. You'll see that it's very simple and easy to use, but simple and easy is good. And like I said, this is going to get all this clutter off of your desk and your bulletin board, and you'll have it in one easy to access place. All right, so you just saw how to create your first note inside of Google Keep, and we walked through all of the tools and features that it has. Like you saw, it's really easy and simple to use, but I want to go ahead and jump back on my computer real quick because I want to show you what it looks like once you've got a bunch of notes and lists created inside of Google Keep and how you can continue to organize those lists in there. Before we wrap this video up, I just very quickly want to show you what it looks like when you have several notes in here. So you see that I've got several, I've color coded them, and the nice thing is you can now move these around. So I can keep all of the things that are color coded, meaning they're just for me together or 
um, for my team together. You can also pin a note and that is going to, you see, pin it to the very top. So that tells me this is something important that I need to look at. So those are just a few other quick organizational things that you can do to help organize your notes. So one question that I had when I first learned about Google Keep was, do I have to get on my laptop or my computer to be able to access all of the list and notes that I create? And the answer to that is no. One of the great things about Google Keep is that you can actually download it to your phone. All you have to do is go to the App Store, type in Google Keep in the search bar, it should be the first thing that comes up, and then just install that to your phone. After you have the Google Keep app installed on your phone, go ahead and open it up. Just remember to log in with the same Google account that you were using to create your notes inside of Google Keep on your computer. I know I've got multiple Google accounts, so just make sure that you're using the right login so that way everything that you did on the computer transfers over to your phone. Then you'll be able to pull up your notes and your to-do list anytime, anywhere, as long as you have your phone with you. So in a lot of ways, it's actually more convenient because even with my sticky notes, I had to be at my desk to see those. And now, since I have my phone on me most of the time, I can pull up my notes pretty much any time. You can also create new notes and mark items off of your checklist directly from your phone. Like I said, I just started using Google Keep a few weeks ago and I am loving it for organization and getting everything that I need into one place, but there's also a lot of other practical uses for it, especially for teachers. Some of the things that you can use Google Keep for include your weekly and daily to-do list, meeting agendas, checklist, list of ideas, call logs, and student data, just to name a few. So as you can see, there's a lot of practical uses for this Google app for you, your team, and for your students. So I hope you enjoy using it. And if you've got any other ideas for how you can use it as a teacher, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know. I would love to hear how you're using it because I'm sure you guys have ideas that I haven't even thought of yet. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel because on next week's video, I'm actually gonna be talking about Google Keep even more, and I'm going to show you how you can customize your Google Keep by creating headers and borders and really creating custom notes inside of there. So until next week, happy teaching.